Okay, here we are doing one of our synthetic proofs where you are kind of left to do the whole thing from soup to nuts without a lot of help. Um, but I'm here to provide that. So if you follow along, and I'm going to have you guys pause this and try to fill in on your own so you're sort of forced to think it through. And hopefully this will give you help uh, doing the rest of the problems from this section. Uh, this is, what, 2.7. Uh, here's the proof. Uh, prove that if a quadrilateral has a pair of opposite sides that are both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral must be a parallelogram, okay? So uh, I've got some hints and some helpful suggestions. Uh, this is pretty much out of the reader. Definitely you want to draw a picture. You want to mark it according to what you know. And you want to use those marks to help plan out a proof. Big suggestion is to work from the bottom up. Think about what you need to do to get to the end and then the top down. And you want to be really clear about what you're trying to prove. You want to utilize all the givens. And once you've sort of written up a rough draft, maybe you need to polish it up but think it through one more time at the end. Okay? So to do that really quickly, uh, I would like you to do a drawing of this. All right? Draw that quadrilateral and mark it with a pair of opposite sides that are both congruent and parallel. And let's use the letters A, B, C, D appropriately, okay? So you can pause and do that drawing. Go. All right, you are back, and here's what my drawing is going to look like. I'm going to draw something that has opposite sides that are parallel and are the same length. So I'm going to start by doing that, making those parallel and the same length. And then I'll connect these. There's my quadrilateral. There's my A, B, C, and D. And remember, parallel is different from being congruent. So I really need two sets of marks there like that. Now, what am I trying to show? Well, I'm trying to show, I'm trying to be really clear about the to prove part, that I'm trying to prove that this is a parallelogram. Well, you need to know your definitions. To prove that, I want to show that this is parallel to this. And I'm always going to put a question mark by the thing that I don't know but I'm trying to show. All right, so can I do that? I think I can. In order to do that, in order to show that these are parallel, again, you can pause and sort of talk it over with yourself or a friend. How do I show that two lines are parallel? All right, pause and think. Okay, if you're back and you have thought about this, the only way we can show two lines are parallel is if we have a transversal and we can show that in this case there's no obvious corresponding angles because there'd be an angle outside here but I want to show that this angle here with two question marks is congruent to that angle there. If I can show those angles are congruent then I can say these lines are parallel. Well how do I show angles are congruent? Heck, by now hopefully it's dawn on you how you do that. So again I will pause and you can talk it over and you can maybe fill in that idea. How do I show that these two angles are congruent? Okay, you're back, and hopefully you've re realized that, of course, these are two triangles. So if I can show these triangles are congruent, I can say that these angles are congruent by CPCTC. So how do I show these two um, triangles are congruent? Uh, I could pause you again. You can pause it, but I'm just going to get going on this to save time and start drawing the proof because I think I've got a pretty clear concept of how to go. So I've got my statements and my justifications and I'm gonna start with the givens. I'm gonna save you the time of watching me do this um, in any great detail. I'll abbreviate but I'll say that AB parallel to DC and AB congruent to DC. Okay, that's given. And again, with your writing a rough draft down here, I know that my last statement, well, my last statement way down here is going to be my to prove. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be brave and bold here, and I'm going to write it down. I don't know what step it is, but my final, final thing should be A, B, C, D is a uh, p-gram for short, okay? And how do I know that something is a parallelogram? I know that it fits the definition of the parallelogram. So I've got to show the step above that it fits that definition. But my final step is going to be def of 
parallelogram, okay? Well, how do I show that something fits the definition? My step before is going to say that, well, I've already got AB way up here, AB parallel to DC, so all I need is to show that AD is parallel to BC. If I can show that, I've got the other half of the definition of parallelogram. Well, how am I going to show something's parallelogram? It's going to be, or that's parallel, it's going to be the converse, oops, converse of AIA. And uh, that's important to realize that we're going the other direction, we're taking angles. So then I'm going to go back to my drawing now and work from the top down. I'm going to call this angle one and this angle two, okay? And I am going to then. Uh, with my first step, I'm going to draw that auxiliary line. And you don't need to spell this out, but I'm just going to make it clear to my reader that it's an auxiliary line, and that's AC. All right? And that's, um, that's just a postulate. We'll call that the auxiliary line postulate. But you can always draw a line between two points, one unique line between two points can't prove that, have to accept that as something that you're just allowed to do. All right. Then step three is once I've drawn that line, I know that these two sides are parallel. So I can say, oh, look, this angle three and that angle four have to be congruent. Angle three is congruent to angle four. And what's that reason? All right. Should be without hesitation. You can pause talk about it. It is, of course, that it is AIA. They are alternate interior angles. We know these lines are parallel, so those angles are congruent. Step four, that's going to be a reflexive step. And by the time it's taken me to write this, you should have been able to fill in what it is that's reflexive, what's congruent to itself. It's got to be AC is congruent to CA. You don't have to reverse the letters, but sometimes it helps to reinforce the idea that you're doing like a mirror image and it's congruent to itself. Well, um, I have now got a, a side, an angle that is included, and a side. So I can now say in step five that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, and I'll maybe let you fill that in, and for reason of side, angle, side, okay? So what is the correct letters uh, in order? It's going to be C, D, A. Again, I'm starting with the um, small angle that was A, I, A, and I'm going over across the 2 to the B, down the 1. So I go from the 4 across the 2 arrows, down the 1, so you'll see it corresponds. And... I then can do my next step, which is to say if the um, triangles are congruent, my all-important step to say that angle um, 1, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 for C, P, C, T, C. And then step 7 is that, um, as we talked about, it's going to be the converse of AIA. And step 8 then is our final, final step that we have now shown that ABCD is a parallelogram. Okay? Hopefully that's helpful.